All right, everyone. Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm finally getting around to it. We are going to talk about the Alaris medley system, more specifically the 8015 series PC unit, which is basically the brains of the whole entire medley system. Let's go ahead and get into it. This unit was donated by Relink Medical. I will leave their information in the description below. Thank you guys very much for supporting my channel, allowing me to bring this kind of technology to the masses. All right, first off, um, guys, there's a lot of tape on here. And the reason they put this tape on here is to secure this front panel to protect the display. And, wow, that is a lot of tape. Come on, tape. Jeez, that is a lot of tape. All right. All right, here we go. Wow, it's a good looking display. All right, let me go ahead and plug this bad boy in. It's got a long power cord. Let's see if it even powers up. Hear the beep of the speaker where it's trying to acknowledge something, but no power up. With all medical equipment, of course, you want to go ahead and let it charge for 24 hours before you troubleshoot something. That's for any medical device out there. If it's got a low battery, if it's got some sort of error code or something, let the battery charge all the way before you begin your troubleshooting. This device here, obviously it's been unplugged for a while. I have no idea what the condition of the battery is. Remember, all batteries and medical equipment generally have a three-year life expectancy. Sometimes it's different. I get that. But three years, I guarantee this battery is older than three years. I wouldn't troubleshoot why it's not turned on at all until I change out that battery. So let's do an overview of the Alars 8015. It has the familiar IUI ports that you see on each side because you can hang modules off to each side based on your configuration. And uh, it's got a series of interface buttons here around the center display. These are all called soft buttons or soft keys. And they select various options based on what menu you're currently in. There's a silence, which is silence all in alarms. There's an options button, which does have a lot of functions. You get numerics, so you can enter your uh, bolus, your infusion, uh, whatever it is. And uh, this system also has a... Uh, a drug library, which is probably the most important feature set. A drug library is very important because it can prevent medication errors and it, it minimizes user error, basically. Um, there are a couple indicators down here in the corner. One of them is battery. Notice there's no lights on it. Hmm. Let's see if I unplug it and power on. All right. It, oh, 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 hey, it's booting, it's booting. All right. Now the display is dim. Pay no attention to that because often many of these devices are dim. But, all right, here we go. And we're in. It says maintenance due, confirm. Uh, you can see my soft menu button right here. But um, it's booting. That's a huge plus. All right. And it's going to beep you to beep because that's what they do. Let's go ahead and power this guy off. Uh, confirm. System off. There you go. We'll go through the menus and stuff later. The other things on the front uh, are the Wi-Fi, which is going to be on the back, which brings us to the back. We have a regular pull clamp. We have a network interface port. We have a Wi-Fi card, which this port serves multiple functions, including reflashing. And then we have this mysterious little button right here. Cool little button. It's got several different features. Um, use your user manual to figure that guy out. Um, one of the things that we can use this button for is during boot, you can put it into diagnostics mode, um, which is also interface mode, which talks to the laptop because this system uses a laptop to do the PMs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and unplug it and let's go ahead and take this guy apart. Um, notice you have spring release latch on one side. It's because your modules are going to latch on the one side. 
you have an IEC that is being clamped down. And this is a number one Phillips, of course it is. Let's go ahead and pull this guy all the way out. So some of the stuff that I've noticed over the years is not just the uh, bad ports where they get corroded, but also this guy right here will be loose sometimes. And notice right here, oh, this fastener here is definitely loose. This is for the snap, which is your cord retention. And it goes off together. And now this port right here can usually just rock out. Yep, it's kind of limited by the clamp. Horrible design, uh, but what can you say? Because this unit was designed 20 some years ago. These things have been in service for a long time. All right, I'm gonna just continue on down the road. We're gonna go ahead and pull the cover off here. And then I'm gonna show you how to get inside this device. Now this is just pulling off the accessory card or the communications card. Now these guys, they can do things like update the drug library themselves. There, there's a bunch of different things that they can do. Um, usually drug libraries are maintained centrally by the pharmacy department. So it's not something that biomeds normally goof around with. The software inside this guy here is something, unfortunately, we've had to deal with quite a bit. Most medical devices you do not flash very often, but because of all the various types of software that have happened over the last 20 years, I myself have flashed probably half a dozen different software variants over the years. It's crazy. So there's a little shield that protects your Wi-Fi. And here's your little compact wireless LAN card. Now this is a PCM CIA slot, so you can use this slot to upgrade with compact flash, which is something that maybe I'll show you guys how to do someday. But let's go ahead and keep on trucking. We're gonna go right down here to the base plate because that's where the battery is. This is the battery. And unlike some devices, this one here has four screws in order to get into the battery. And there are some times where this guy will go into a critical alarm and it will continue alarming. There's nothing you can do to shut it off except remove the battery. And there's four fasteners to take it out. So your customers will call up, they'll be very upset. And this guy is just screaming at them. <laughs> it's because the stupid battery on the bottom is uh, gotta be removed. That was not all the same fastener. Uh, a couple of those were different types of fasteners that were in the bottom of this. All right, so this is the battery, uh, date code 1610. No matter what that date code is, it doesn't even matter because that is definitely over three years old. On the bottom here, you've got your contacts for the battery and your springy thing for release. Oh boy, let's go ahead and keep on going. Just like some of the other ones, uh, like the modules, we're gonna go ahead and take the IUI ports out. Let's do that now. And I'm sure that this guy's gonna come out nice and smooth. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, come on. There, oh, it was much smoother than I thought. Go figure. Flip it around. I see schmoo up here in the collection of the top of the port. And usually that makes them very difficult to come out. But look at this. Out they come. No problem. Okay, next. So here on the bottom, we have two fasteners down here. Let's go ahead and pull them. It has been, geez, it's probably been six, seven, Eight years? Has it really been that long? Like eight years since I've had to pull one of these pumps apart. So this is going to be an experience for me as well. So that gets rid of the bottom. And let's see, where's the other surprise? There's another surprise here. I know there is. So now uh, what I've got is a series of... Uh, series of fasteners here on the handle. That's right. Got to take the handle off. This is a bad design. Right, yeah. I'll turn it so you guys can see better. One. These are number one Phillips, by the way. I see more people messing up Phillips by using the wrong ones. Okay, there's these.
The reason I have to take the handle apart is because it's hiding a dirty little secret. And that secret would be extra fasteners. All right, let's put them over here. Let's pull these guys out. Jeez, I'm so glad I haven't had to get into these very often. Come on. We are, wow, those are long. All right, pull this guy out. Spare parts. And now, of course, it wants to fall apart. All right, and for the reveal, let's go ahead and turn this guy a little bit. You can see there are a series of ribbon cables connecting the front panel to the base. Let's go ahead and unplug all those right now. So one of them is an LED for your backlight. Similar technology to the 8100 series module. Look at that. It's just a bunch of fibers and one LED right here. All right, and if it sounds like a bunch of kids are dying uh, on this video track, it's because right behind my garage is an elementary school and I think that those kids are being tortured because they sure are being loud, aren't they? Let's see. And this guy. Come on. There it is. And a ground strap. Yep. So one at the bottom, that's your ground. Be careful not to damage it. Oh, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and stick the base over here. That's the most important part. Let's go ahead and talk about this guy right here. All right, so this right here is your uh, LED driver, or actually there is no LED on this. This is older. This is a ballast and it's a fluorescent tube driver. And let's see, what else do we got going on over here? I have, almost looks like an antenna on the back of it. Uh, we got the fiber optic backlight and, oh, those are backlights for the buttons. And let's see, what is this guy? Video? So that's video, and this guy right here is all the interlay buttons around the sides. So this one here is for your buttons. Pretty cool. And I would assume that this guy here is changed out as a unit. Yep. It's one little ground flippity flappy right here. It's supposed to interface with this uh, um, black, the back plane. So if it's not, uh, make sure it's correctly grounded. But uh, pretty cool. The way that this uh, display is changed out is there's two fasteners here and these two posts will pop off and uh, this black uh, retainer will just move, come off and you can pull out your display if you want to. But like I said, I do believe that this guy's probably changed out as a uh, field replaceable unit, FRU, which makes it probably very expensive. Let's move all the fasteners over here. Let's get rid of this battery. And let's talk about what's inside this guy. All right. Now, does it come out easily? Hmm. I thought that it did. Okay. Well, uh, when in doubt, start taking it apart. So we got number one Phillips inside here, which is holding this protective shield on. This is also like an RF shield. The reason that they have to have shielding is because, well, for one of the reasons, this guy has a switch mode power supply inside it. And switch mode power supplies take the AC and they convert it over to DC, which is what all modern day electronics run off of. And uh, that switch mode power supply can and will generate a lot of uh, EMF. And that's noise. And things like ECG, EEG, they, they pick up even slight noise and it will affect its reading. So we have to 
do extra to shield medical devices. So that's why you see all these uh, Faraday cage like designs and we got extra RF shielding. That's, that's to protect outside devices. Okay, uh, so the pan comes off and here is a really interesting board. Take a look at that. Not much going on the front side. It looks just like an interconnect board, but I've got one fastener here in the middle and then it should have interconnect fingers based on this, 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 and this. So I think it's gonna carefully pry apart from the underboards and we should be able to pull it out. Could be wrong, but I think we will get it out. There we go, all right, all right. Carefully. So I've got one cable down here at the bottom and this looks like it is for my alarm. That's what it looks like. That's this one right here. And wow, this is cool. So this is the CPU board for this guy. Uh, we've got our processor and more importantly, we have the software that it runs on. And guys, as I've said before, actually, wait a minute. Sorry, I'm just uh, checking. All right, just checking, checking. Anytime you have a large capacitor on a board, it's almost definitely a power rail. So be weary of that. Yep. Okay, all right. So there's a lot of stuff going on. We got our RAM over here. Our OS, our operating system, is loaded here on this uh, PCMCIA card. And that is it. That is the entire CPU board. So there are some uh, pin interconnects. Got to be very careful. Um, I like the fact that they use these type of uh, multi-connectors. So this actually acts as a backplane. And these are options. This card and this card are options, which means we can also trade them out. And if there's a defective function, we're, we're gonna pull those out in a minute. But if there's a defective function, you can change those out easily. So, yep, that's the CPU board. Now, let's see, what do we got going on here? Let's pull apart some of these functions, these, these uh, option cards. So one of the option cards is going to be communications. Oh yeah. And it's screwed in. Okay. So one of them is a uh, interface card for the Wi-Fi. It's a basically just a PCMCIA slot. That's this card right here. It's got some screws in the back which are holding it in. And the second one this card right here looks like this is a network or a nurse call system interface. So when this device reaches a critical error code, you want it to alarm so that the nurses um, can come and respond. One of the ways that a lot of infusion pumps do that is they interface with like the nurse call system. So it triggers and it tells them to go to wherever you need them to go. Um, also, often when you see a network port, it, that means that the device has the potential to just directly network to an EMR. Not really sure on this one. Who's to say we're gonna proceed? All right, let's see. All right, so I have a couple standoffs here in the middle. Okay, so I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> There's a fastener coming through. I thought that there was going to be a stud and it was going to screw into a threaded hole. Instead, they used a female, double female. So uh, I have a fastener right here. I got to be aware of that because I'm going to change that out. Put it back on when I can. So I got one screw in the upper corner. One screw in this upper corner. And that's it. That is it. We got two screws. Yep. 
All right. Okay. Before I do anything else, I'm going to grab that screw and put it back through the hole. All right. So let's go ahead and screw that guy back on so I don't lose my place because there's a bunch of different holes on this board. There we go. Put it back on. All right. Let's see, so this looks like a power board. Ouch, got me. Oh, uh, let's see, what do we have? So these guys right here are shielded. And then I have a fuse. I've got inductors. I've got battery interface, right? Okay, so right over here is where the DC comes in. And the battery comes in here. So we have a battery maintainer circuit. And right here is um, where the DC from the uh, switch mode power supply comes in, which is also why we got the filter. We want to keep the noise from the switch mode from going into the device. So right here we have um, probably a couple different power phases. And one of them is probably going to be the battery maintainer circuit. Maintainer circuit? Can't speak today. Um, so... If you have a problem where this device is not charging the battery, this would probably be the board that I would go to. So first off, check to make sure that your battery is even capable of being charged. Secondly, I would come to this, which is obviously a power management board. So we have, you know, a couple chips on there that are going to be software. But yeah, so we're trying to keep out the extra EMF or the extra noise. Kind of cool, simple little board. Kind of cool that I, I have this one torn away so that we can see inside it. I, I just have an inductor and uh, probably a power regulator. Very neat. All right. So we also have some uh, large diodes and a power regulator here. Yep. So it comes in at whatever voltage and it's going to step it down to whatever they need and then it's going to both maintain the battery and run the system. So that's your power management board. And let's see, what else we got? I have the switch mode power supply up in there. Did that just come out? Oh boy, I think this is gonna come out. So I'm cutting one zip tie, which is holding the cable up. And I have one Molex, and now my switch mode power supply should be free. Wait. All right, all right. What's holding me up? Okay, so it looks like the IEC shouldn't really be holding it up. We got two interface boards on the sides which uh, do the I.O. for all the different channels and those along with this whole chassis that's holding the switch mode power supply um, this whole thing should slide out and it is not why is it not <laughs> It does have a switch mode power supply inside. It's got a 24 volt, 2.5 amp switch mode power supply. You have two boards, one right here and one right here. But there's something really cool back here that I want to show you. I've got MP930. MP930. And whatever it is, it connects right here. And it's using the back of the chassis as a heat sink. Very cool. But anyway, it's pretty simple from here. Uh, not too much other than that mystery component in the back, which I'll have to look it up. MP930. It's 1%. Really interesting. I'll have to look that up. But um, we just have a communications card, you know, this one right here is going to be your uh, riser for your uh, PCMCIA. 
And that's pretty much it. So you have a power regulation board, we have a CPU board, and um, some interface cards, you know, for the sides, and your power supply. Pretty simple. Simpler than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and try and get this guy back together and um, see what I can do. Uh, we're we're going to do some more videos on this guy. We're going to run through some PMs only because the PM for this specific model, it runs you step by step on the computer. And I can actually justify doing the PM on that one because this one here, it tells you what software you're using and it runs you through the PM itself you can't really modify it and if that PM changes well the software is right there you can see if it's your version or not so the liability is extremely low on the PMs for these so I'm gonna go ahead and do that as soon as I get this guy back together and uh, we'll do some more exploratory videos I do have some other devices that are coming in from Relink Medical and some other people have offered to donate their medical equipment to the channel I do appreciate it guys we got some real cool stuff coming up um, I have been unfortunately extremely busy. Um, if you guys don't know, I did just have a baby uh, a couple months ago. Besides that, and the traveling around, like I have been so busy. That's why I have reduced the amount of content that I create, but that's okay because I'm going to get back in the saddle and I've got some partnerships that I'm working on with some major companies, and hopefully, we bring you guys better content over a, a larger variety. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you like this. If you do, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really does matter, especially to the folks over at Google and uh, their algorithm, which helps my channel grow. I'm trying to get the message out there, and we're just trying to do some good for this community. Thanks again, guys.